In 2014, my brother Robert was ready to take on the world. He was a bright, brilliant mechanical engineer at UT Austin, and his home for the next three years should have looked a little something like this. But as the fall semester continued, the stress began to catch up with him, coupled with social requirements, late nights, the fact that six years earlier, we had lost my dad to suicide. And overnight, his home went from this to this. Taken in by police officers and arrested, he was admitted into a locked psychiatry unit. And he was given the diagnosis of schizoaffective disorder. We were told, get used to it. This is his reality now. For the next three years, it was. That we fought tirelessly and wanted to get him out. And one day when we finally had him released from the hospital, instead of my bright 20-year-old brother, I was handed a 90-year-old man with tremors, catatonic with medication, unable to speak, feed himself, or brush his teeth. That's what thousands of dollars and the American health system had gotten us with his treatment. We were left with no choice. We had to return back to Mexico as a family, and there we sought out care and found a psychiatrist, fortunately, and a clinic that looked like something I'd never seen before. Instead of police, there were a team of nurses that took him over to his care unit. And my mom and I were sat down here, and a psychiatrist walked out. And I'll never forget, he said, my name is Dr. Jose Castillo. I'm going to be Robert's psychiatrist. We have one hour together, and I want to know everything there is to know about Robert. I'm here to help. I don't know why I had to leave the U.S. to finally find that, to find myself face to face with my brother's care provider, to find quality and compassion inside of the system, but that absolutely changed everything. I decided I wanted to dedicate my life to mental health, and I went off to Stanford to pursue a thesis in mental health innovation and learn about the latest research, clinical models, and innovative technology, as well as meet my business partner. And together, we created a My Health, where we're delivering holistic, comprehensive care to people with severe mental illnesses, and we're setting the new standard of care. Today, thank you. <laughs> Today, we employ a whole team of psychiatrists, therapists, health coaches, primary care doctors, peer support, we wrap around the patient and the family, and we deliver care longitudinally in order to unlock lasting recovery. And our clinics look a little something like this. They're community centers where people have hope, where people connect, where people deliver, uncover really good quality care, and where we do the true work of, de of dedicating a whole team of providers so that these people can lead quality lives. We have clinics in Los Angeles, in Raleigh, and in just a few weeks in New York. And that's today. Tomorrow, we're conducting longitudinal research, gathering genomic data, actigraphy data, medication, metabolic labs, and the over 500 hours of clinical care delivery interactions that each patient has in our care each year. And with that, we're leveraging AI and machine learning in order to develop tools and capabilities that we call the MI Institute that will empower not just the gold standard at MI Health, but for every psychiatrist, for every therapist, even primary care physicians, to be able to treat this population with the same compassion, with the same outcomes, with the same excellence that you would find at MI Health. But we can't do it alone. AMI partners with leading academic institutions and research organizations such as Cedar sinai and New York Presbyterian. And true to our name, AMI means you need community in order to thrive. We're bringing together the best and brightest to generate this impact at scale. 
So join us, support us, come talk to us. We're in my health and together, let's create the new standard of care for severe mental illness for everyone.